I think also a lot of it boils down to instinct and um, and gut and listening to your gut. If something feels right, you have I'm to a, do it. I'm a big believer in that. And so, how long have you been here then? Uh, almost five years. Okay. How many years in Hong Kong now? Over twelve, almost thirteen. Okay. It's going to be fifteen for me. It's a long time, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was not really planned, but I think that's what Hong Kong does to you, you know. Um, Me neither. Me neither. I came, I came to Hong Kong by chance, Uh, not by chance, for love. Uh, I followed love. Okay. Love (laughs) finished, (laughs) and I'm stuck here. Uh, And actually, um, you came to my mind because you're a person that we saw each other maybe a couple of times. Um, but I don't know why it felt uh, a good connection because you came because we wanted to cooperate together for a project. No, mm-hmm. and then it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. But then you stayed in my mind, and then I saw you again by chance with your wonderful magazine, Design Anthology, yeah. right? And uh, I wanted to touch the thing that, like, I came here that I was doing art. Okay, I didn't know that. I'm a that. musician, I'm an ex-pianist, and my degree is in political science. Oh. So, you don't need to be a designer. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you have a look at the camera. <laughs> and, um, and so I improvised myself. Uh, yes and no. I improvise in the sense that I don't have a background of that. But my background is even more because doing art, doing um, uh, living and living... I lived in New York, London, and Rome, and Napoli most of my life. You know, you get information, you meet a lot of people, so you, you know, you retrieve information and you put it here as like a computer, and then here in the design world, you just let it all out. Mm -hmm. This is why I always say a matter of life and design. Why? Because it's all about design and it's all about life. Mm. So going to you, I was thinking, that's why I, I wanted to have this chat, uh, to show people that you don't need to have something that you know you studied for. Some people should study because if you do a, like you know a, a, an engineering or a doctor right. or a lawyer, you, you have to know things. And yeah, you can't really make it up. <laughs> and it's about experience. Here as well is about experience, but you have you have to have something that is you have that diamond or you know the strength that has to come out mm. so you did similar because you yeah. were a designer an architect well i was i was an interior designer but actually i originally studied textiles because in australia at the time when i was finishing high school i thought i wanted to be an architect and all of my subjects at high school at that time were really creative i went to a great school i did two different art subjects which so one was history of art um, and then we did studio practical. We would stretch our own canvases and paint. And nice. then I had a textile course where we would sew. Um, I was doing graphic design. It was all creative subjects. And they said to me, well, you're going to have to drop all of those and do maths and science. And I went, okay, well, architecture is not for me. <laughs> and I think when I made that decision, when I kind of realised that, I was, I was a bit thrown. I didn't really know what else to do because I had spent so much of my early teens I suppose thinking that that was what I wanted to do and interior design didn't really exist at that stage in Australia Mm. it wasn't really it seems like you're talking of the 19th century (laughs) (laughs) yeah you'd think so but I mean yeah I'm going to give away my age now but it was the early 90s late you're younger than me much younger than me so but yeah so I I think I finished high school in 1993 (laughs) still a long time ago but um so, yeah, I kind of didn't know what to do because, as I said, interior design didn't really exist at that stage. You were either an architect or a decorator, and being a decorator was something, that, you know, that a housewife did. It's, yeah, yeah, it's still yeah, no yeah, more still, respected now yeah, than what it was you then. You decorated? No. Exactly. So I studied textiles, and I didn't do a very... It wasn't my education beyond high school was not very traditional. I didn't study full-time at university. I always worked and studied. So I never really had that traditional university experience and I I don't like to regret things but there are you know there's a bit of that that I regret I would have liked to have 
being a uni student on campus for a little while. But just for the experience just or because the experience. you're missing the actual studying because, you know, it goes mm. against what I was saying before. <laughs> no, I don't think I missed out on studies. Um, but yeah, just for the experience, I think. Mm. But I, to be honest, yeah, I, you know, we talked about this before. I don't think education is ever wasted. So I think oh, even though my career has been very sort of all over the place, um, you know, I think everything that I've learnt up until now has been really valuable, obviously. It's just I would never have known back then that this is where I was going to end up. But don't you think that experience, for example, going back, you know, to, to your magazine that says um, design, architecture, art, lifestyle, travel? And... Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that kind of covers most of it, yeah. And it is very nicely, you know, put and uh, designed, but... Don't you think that is all about the design in the end? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that was, you know, one of the things that when we started Design Anthology, I couldn't understand why design magazines weren't designed better. They all looked terrible to me. And it just, you know, you've sort of nailed it on the head. I didn't understand why they themselves were not designed. So that kind of became the driving force, I suppose, for so many things about what Design Anthology stood for. Um, and in fact, you called it Design Anthology. You didn't call it like, you know, Travel Anthology or right. Art and Anthology, right? Yeah. And do you, do, don't you think that, you know, not having the experience of being a publisher because you, you didn't, right? No, none, none so at all. It's just the idea that you had of seeing that probably you did not like what was on the market and you're like, well, maybe mm. we should create something, no? Yeah, and I think also given my background as an interior designer and... Of course it helps. It, I think it did help. I hope it helped. Obviously just from an editorial eye and, and an aesthetic standpoint, but also wanting to read the kind of magazine that interior designers or designers want to read, that it's... Just people. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's, people. yeah, exactly. And I love that word, curiosity. I think that's really super important. I can put up with a lot of things in people, but if they're not curious, I just find that really boring. And you know what? I think that's an interesting thing because curiosity, I think, besides killing the cat, <laughs> but it did help me throughout all my life. Because if I weren't curious, I think I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't go in the next step. Right. And I wouldn't have done all those steps. And wouldn't I have traveled. So, yeah. So mm -hmm. maybe if my father and didn't push me in traveling with him because I was actually obliged, right? Oh, because okay. I was 11, I was 7, I was 12, 18. So I was with the family. So I had to go live in New York and London. So I was lucky because I was forced but that forcing, though, I was never um, not happy of like leaving friends or uh, leaving my... Yes, maybe from New York when I was 20, going back to Italy, I was like, ah, <laughs> I would have loved to stay. But I, I, I couldn't, so I had to follow again. But the adaptation, I think with curiosity, adaptation mm. is easier mm. because you find mm. interest in everything. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think for me that is, you know, I love the subject matter of your talks because I think that that is what sets designers apart. It's not necessarily a sort of an aesthetic or an ability or an education. I think it is this curiosity about the world, about life and everything that surrounds them. And maybe a little bit of that is wanting to make it better or look better or function better or but I think a lot of it stems from curiosity. Definitely. And don't you think that curiosity uh, is applied greatly to people? That is, uh, if you're curious about people, then maybe your work is even going to be our work. Is it, you know, it can develop in a much more interesting way. Yeah. So, for example, clients. If you're not curious about people, you just hate them. Mm. Because they're a pain in the ass. And why would you want to design a but, space for people that you don't but, like? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I find that most of my clients that we became friends, I love people and I love to understand the differences and the similarities and actually more the differences probably mm. uh, in order to give and to stimulate me more. So I find stimulus with difference, with meeting, being curious, 
And and people like me being curious as well because I'm curious of their lives. Mm. And this is the the relationship with people. In your case, you have to be curious of what's happening around the world. So the, you know you retrieve the most important things and you put them there. Yeah. <clears throat> and you have a collection of things, and probably you're gonna be the one that discovers something that not others have yet. I hope so. But yeah, you're right. You know, I'd never really thought about it like that. But I think it, it a lot of it stems from all the day to day and the motivation that keeps us going is I think a lot of it is curiosity is, you know, wanting to find people that are doing interesting things and wanting to share those stories. So it's the curiosity to discover and learn, but then also that desire to tell those stories, mm. I think is wanting to share that rather than just hold on to it yourself. I think those two are probably the most important qualities, really. Of course, because if, you, if you're curious and you know self-absorbed, fine, it's okay because it, it teaches you your own things. But the sharing, <clears throat> the sharing is very important, no? Mm. And uh, I always say, you know, I have a collection of amazing books here, which is like not huge, but I have a few nice books, some rare too. And I tell my friends, you know, when you want to come. Just come and check them and stay. Because mm. I like the sharing, the space, sharing the things that I've built. And this is another action of uh, uh, sharing. And for me, it's an act of love. Mm. Uh, people can say, who the fuck are you to, you know, to, to share with me? Who do, who? No. Yes, of course, I share. <laughs> and I, I really, I am somebody that has a 54 years old of experience from whatever I've done. And even if I lived in a little small town, I think that each one's experience uh, is different. Mm. You know? Even if we lived door to, next door to each other in a little small town in uh, Australia, I think we have things to say. Yeah, absolutely. And because we were designed in a way, our DNA, to see the world differently. So whatever you have seen, and you're a woman, me, I'm a man, and you know, we see already the world, I think, in a little different way. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I like, and I love this thing, and this is why it's an act of love that I'm doing towards myself, first of all, because I trust myself, and I trust others that probably there is this exchange. Mm. So this is why I like to have people that, again, we saw each other only maybe twice, but I had the feeling that, and I still have, <laughs> that you are a really super nice person and you are, you know, open. Thank you. And, you know, too curious. Mm. Maybe that's the right word, and you're curious. I hope so. I mean, I, I find that a, a of course trait you are. in people that, like I said, I, I find <laughs> people that aren't curious to be pretty boring. I think if you're, if you're not you know, curious and interested in what's going on out there, then you're going to have pretty limited development, I think. Um, so, yeah, above all else, that's that's a trait that I, I value in people. I think you can kind of learn so much from other people just because of a, a bit of curiosity. Um, and, yeah, that like I said before, that sense of wanting to share, maybe that comes from generosity. I'm not sure. Um, I'm still learning what that means because, uh, yeah, I... I don't come from media. I don't have any formal training in that area. Um, and I, I don't necessarily run the magazine, <clears throat> excuse me, as a, I mean, obviously it's a business and it's meant to make money, but I think there there is a lot of generosity in, in what we do and the community that we've built. Um, so, yeah, generosity and curiosity. Of course, and generosity is as well... Um towards yourself you just said something that unfortunately belongs to me too i would like to earn from what i do which <laughs> i do but not as much as i give mm. is it about generosity or about stupidity <laughs> maybe a little bit of both <laughs> but, but 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 you're clearly but, very passionate about what you yes, do though, right yes so you do it and for I the love, love of it. it yes not just for the money yes. although we do have to make a living we do yes. have to feed ourselves and, exactly yeah. so so there is all this process that is like this is why sometimes with people living here in this particular city that they come and go you know they come and uh, they want to make money most of them are in the finance here now uh, a little less because of the time that we're living in but uh, most of them are like that. A lot of people that I know, even friends that were in finance or not, they left. Mm. So they come and go. It's a place not to stay unless you're from Hong Kong or you yeah. have interest or you have your family here. I'm a single person. 
My family is back in, in, the, in Italy, so of course I miss that. But at the same time, I'm super happy of being here because it stimulates me. Mm. So it gives me that curiosity mm. uh, to do things better. To yeah, it's a, it's a very healthy competition as well. Yeah, I think that's a good word to describe Hong Kong actually in so many different ways. That sense of stimulation. I guess you get that out of any big city, but yes and no depends. Mm. Because the pa- the pace here is very very fast, and you see that there is a competition, but it's not like New York. New York, everybody's competitive. Oh. I've lived there, you know. You can see even the the pizza delivery boy. He goes like, you know, he has to be first. He has to go deliver, and it seems like whoa, he, he's he must be very important, no? That's the feeling that I right. that I always had, <laughs> and the competition of people one with the other, even in the streets. Here, maybe it's because I don't speak the language. Mm. Maybe I'm a little bit. Then that's something that I that I don't like too much about my life here. Is that I I'm, I I haven't integrated really in the mm. in the fabric of you know the the, the real city. Yeah. So not speaking the language it's a, it's a it's a it's a big uh, it's minus. One of my regrets as well. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's extremely difficult. And it's very, yeah, it's very difficult. I mean, mm. if I were living in China, I would have for sure learned Putonghua, mm. which I like as well. Mm. Uh, but anyways, besides that, you have this curiosity. Maybe it enhances the curiosity to know, to go around, to, to, to look at the city, to understand. I love the temple. I even went this morning mm. uh, to do the sticks because, oh, you know, nice. yeah, because I like all that. I, I read tarot if you want after uh, we can do ooh, a session. Okay. That sounds tempting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> scary, of course. but tempting. No, it's not scary. <laughs> Again, it's another design. It's part of life. Um, and I feel that it's a game. Yes, you believe, but uh, unfortunately or unfortunately, I think the truth is we live and we die. Basta. Mm. <laughs> and we have to be curious and generous and, you know, in the middle. There are people that choose to do other things, people that cannot choose to do some things because they're forced. Mm. So, you know, we are very lucky to be talking like this and being like this. Yeah. But who knows what luck is anyways? Maybe some people, yeah. I don't know. I've never really, I'm not really sure my thoughts on that. I feel like my life in particular, I can't speak about others, that there has been certainly an element of luck in there, but it's, you know, obviously also, I think, a lot of hard work and putting yourself out there and being in the right place at the right time for that luck or serendipity or whatever it is to happen. You have to be out there. If you're sitting at home too scared to sort of live life, then that's got to be a lot of luck to save that situation, I think. But... Yeah, I'm still kind of getting my head around my thoughts on all of those things. You know, I, I think people believe in destiny and, you know, fate and serendipity. And I'm not I'm not sure. I don't know whether it was fate that brought me to Hong Kong. I never planned on coming to Asia at all, to be honest. I was, like most Australians of my generation, a total Europhile. And actually, Italy was very, very high on my list. Um and uh, yeah, I've never lived in Europe. I'm very was up until this year, obviously very lucky to be there regularly enough to I felt like get my fix of all of the wonderful things about being in Europe without having to deal with some of the less wonderful aspects of being there. Um, but yeah, you know, I lived in Tokyo for three years before coming here, nice. and then now fifteen, almost fifteen years in Hong Kong, and. I would never have planned this, but sometimes life, and I think it goes back to what we were saying before with your career, sometimes, you know, you think you're going to do something. You might study something and think that that's what you're going to do in life or you think I'm going to stay home and and have three kids and a white picket fence. And sometimes life has other plans for you. Mm. And I think you just just have to be, you have to be curious and just open to these experiences. Otherwise... Yeah, I think it's going to be quite dull. Openness and curiosity to the openness, of course, it's very it's important. But you just said life, what did you say? Life has other plans, maybe? Yeah, Something so you put it at the lines. third, so that life actually has a plan for you. So maybe you subconsciously believe that life... Maybe, yeah. 
Who knows? But in the end, I don't know if it's fate, but I think things get thrown up. Opportunities arise, and I think if you're not open to those opportunities, you don't see them. You don't see them, but also. You know the opportunities for me to come to Asia. I could have said no. I don't want to go to Asia. That's not my thing. I have no idea what my life would look like right now if I hadn't taken that opportunity. If I hadn't followed that path, which I didn't originally think was the path for me. So yeah, you know, I think you just have to be. I think also a lot of it boils down to instinct and、um, and gut and listening to your gut. If something feels right. You have、I'm、to a, do it. I'm a big believer in that. That's, yes, that's this, my thing. Yes, and how do you think that the gut works? Because I have an, a, a theory of mine. Well, yeah, I've been reading a lot about this recently. I mean, I guess the whole medical psychological connections between the gut and the brain. And I, you know, look, I'm not an expert, but I don't know what it is.、Uh, whether it's a voice in your head or what it is, I don't know. But For me, something either feels like the right thing to do or it doesn't, and I've become a bit better, I think, at sort of understanding that. Yeah, and just kind of blocking out the other noise and listening to that and tuning into it and following it because it's worked for me. I mean, starting a magazine six years ago was a huge risk. Of course, there were a lot of people that said, "You're insane! What are you doing? You're going to wait, you know, lose all of、yeah. your money." Yeah, I mean, in the age of digital, where everyone kept saying to me, "Isn't print dead? Isn't print dead?" and they're still asking me, but it was a huge risk to take. Is print dead? No, clearly not. Thank God. <laughs>、yeah. So, because people like you still exist that buy books, thank God.、Oh, <laughs> I can't read. You know, today a friend of mine was like, "Hey, I'm ordering something online. Would you Would you like to 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 have it?" I was like, "Oh yeah, maybe this book is like, no, but it's all." Digital, so it's gonna, you know, you can read it. I said,、like, no, I can't.、Yeah. My eyes, I like to see things, but already I'm on the phone the whole time. Yeah. And then reading it, I don't like it. I don't, f- I don't get into it's it. It's not the same experience. Even the the Kindle thing, which is cool because you know it's flat and it's not like、uh, with light.、Mm. But no, I can't. I can't.、Mm. Uh, no, and I think a lot of architects and designers are, are like you and I that we still really value reading printed material. Yes, but、so. even even you know the the pencil. I'm not a, I'm not a, I cannot draw even if I did、um, things you know with colors and I, when I did art I did draw things I painted and but I use my hands you know so I would paint with my fingers because I go to the Basic of things,、mm. but that's another discussion. If you want, we can we can have. Yeah, if we get there. To go, yeah, but I wanted to go before you were saying、um, about、uh, the gut feeling,、mm. because I have a theory that it's all about balance. Okay. So you, we are in a world of always balancing. You know, we walk and we balance between two legs. Uh, you know, we have two eyes. We have this. We're balanced with the sound. If this doesn't work, you know, we fall.、Mm. So it's all about balance.、Mm. And the guts, I think, because it's in the middle. And you,、uh, and I love food and I love to cook. So when you smell, I know what goes with, you know, what ingredient goes with another ingredient. If I mm. smell them, mm. Mm. wow. So、okay. from the smell, you have this balance because you feel, you taste it, kind of. You know, it's all connected. The five yeah, senses, right? Yeah, of course.、Right? Yeah. And、it's really interesting, actually. Ah, and then if you actually next time you have that gut thing, it's like, oh, you feel the balance. You feel like, oh, it's a balancing mechanism. That's interesting. And so you go, no, even gut feelings. You have to turn left. You feel better. Every morning I do this as an experience. Every time I go on the ferry because I live on Lama, every time I go on the ferry, I go out because I always go outside. I'm like, where am I going to sit? So people, no people, the emptiness, and I feel the balance where that seat is the perfect seat for me that morning.、Hmm. And I don't. I mean, people think that I'm crazy, but no, because it's a very quick decision. Yeah, yeah. And the quicker, the better, because、yeah. you are very concentrated. It's like a, it's like a you're not overthinking. Mini、it. meditation, and、yeah. then boom, boom. Yeah. And, you, and I sit there, and it's fine. Yeah. If I don't sit at the right place, I'm sure something happens. Something falls. You know there is an unbalanced situation.、Mm, that's interesting. It's a good way of putting it. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like. This is why I believe in tarot as well. It's about there. Are, there are beautiful things. I mean, that's、um, especially the major arcans. There are all stories. Each card twenty-two,、mm. and then you know they balance 
uh, amongst themselves and the way you read, it's all about you and me in the end. Those are a, a mean. This is why people can read, you know, coffee things or you throw a glass mm. on the floor and you read how you broke it. Mm. You can do all these things. Yeah, that's interesting. I've never really heard that about tarot cards, mm. about the balance. Because people are so serious about them, which mm. is good. But I'm serious about everything and, n and nothing. <laughs> if I become serious, I'm already a Virgo, which I'm a pain in the ass. You're Italian as well. <laughs> and then I'm Italian. I'm from Napoli, so you know where, where I come from is, <laughs> is a living theater. <laughs> and uh, coming from there, it helped me to find my way here. Or when I go to China, I'm like, okay, this is home. When I go to India, uh, of course, it's yeah. home. <laughs> Actually, Melbourne is the city that I like in uh, Australia. They're yeah. going to hate me, the Sydney people, but... Yeah, it's a good city. I, I miss it a lot, actually. I feel... Actually, that's a really good point. That kind of brings me to why I feel like maybe my time in Hong Kong is coming to an end because I don't feel like I have balance here. Aha, uh -huh. interesting. Mm. And I feel like I would have more balance in my life in Melbourne. Do you want to go back? Um, I don't want to leave Hong Kong. I would like to be able to have one foot in each place. And I guess that's part of where this sense of balance comes from. I think Hong Kong has allowed me to do a lot of things work-wise, but, you know, obviously travel as a base for travel, you know, it's really hard to beat Hong Kong. Uh, mm. And on a good day, obviously this year is not a great example, but on a good day, this is, you know, one of the greatest cities in the world. And I mm. love it. It fills me with adrenaline and inspiration and it's exhilarating and inspiring and, and everything is easy but then some days all of those some things that i love the noise and the energy and the pace and the you know the work ethic and the pragmatism and all of that drives me crazy so it depends on what kind of mood i'm in and how True. i respond to the city um but, you know, this, it has given me a lot. I really will always have a very special place in my heart for Hong Kong, but I feel like I need something else out of life that I'm, I'm not getting place. here. So I'm in the same place. And the magazine you can do work from wherever. Yeah, and that's it. I'm in a very privileged position. But we also started a new edition in Australia, so we have an office in Melbourne now. Nice. Yeah, I read so, that. So yeah, it's. Um, I checked you. No, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, I'm very curious. What did you expect from me today? Uh, this, I think. Yeah. Really? Yeah, just a chat, and it's really weird. Yeah. But like you said, we we have only met a couple of times, but. Uh, those occasions I always found you very easy to chat with and well we we had a bit of a talk on the phone before I got here and yeah I think this was kind of what I imagined unless there's something else that I'm and <laughs> missing now... yeah, is there someone hiding behind the door <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> that would be fun no? No. no 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 not yet not at this stage when I will ha when, I, when I will hopefully have more followers um, probably surprises will come. Magic guests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, but going back to your um, uh, the magazine, um, just to to wrap up this wonderful conversation, I will stay here hours. Actually, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a tarot with you. Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. Right after. Uh, what I would like to 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 highlight and maybe to wrap up again, you know, the conversation is, do you really need to study and to uh, read on books what you have done and what I have done? Or is it really about what we were saying, curiosity, um, generosity, um, and yes, the gut feelings as well? And that everything like vomits out in a nice way and you know it it embraces whatever you have from experience that's a really good question uh i wouldn't want to say don't study interior design or don't study journalism or publishing or you know whatever it is that you study to do what i'm doing um exactly. but, but <laughs> But I, I have met interior designers who are academically qualified but seem to have little interest in what they do beyond sort of nine to five. And I don't really know why they do that for a job because they don't seem passionate about it. 
And so I've met other people like you and myself because my formal education in design didn't come till later on. I was very largely self-taught um, that probably have a better understanding in some ways of what they're doing because they've been driven by something else to go and learn and be self-taught. And I think, and I, I don't, I'm still in two minds about whether that can be taught or trained and whether drawing and art can be taught or trained. I don't know. Um, so there are two very definite opposing views on that. I think a lot of it is built in, but maybe that just stems from curiosity again. And if you have that, then you will go out and seek that. And I, I do believe that you can train your eye when it comes to things that Absolutely. regard aesthetics. Um, so maybe it's both. Like I said, I would never knock a formal education, but it's never wasted. So if you study one thing and then end up doing something com somewhat different, I was going to say completely different, but not uh, you know completely unrelated, I don't think you've lost what you originally studied. I've met architects that people that studied architecture that go on to do jewellery design or fashion designers that studied architecture yeah, and vice versa. I have versa. done uh, political science, which really has nothing to do. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe discipline, not. <laughs> not even the discipline in studying because, you know, I was a bad student. So I couldn't wait to finish that thing. And I did it because my father was pushing. Mm. I understand what you're saying, and it's true, it's never wasted because it teaches you something. Yeah, and the Some, technical side of the drawing, I think, is, is no, valuable. No, 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 but I'm not saying people. that you have to study design, you have to study something, right? And then you go and you follow whatever, and then maybe some people study design, they become designers, and they are amazingly creative and everything, right? Mm. But what you're saying about teaching mm, art, I don't know. Yeah. So I think that when you're small, young, yes, you have to be bombarded with as much as possible. Mm. So and that, given the freedom as well. I yeah, think. so that yeah. the child actually goes into that naturally and feels what's, what's his, what he or she is attracted to, no? Yeah. Um, yes. But then the, again, then it's, it's so personal. It is, yeah. So maybe there's no rule, no? No, I think, uh, I don't think there is a rule. We're all so different and we all have different paths to follow. And for some people that might be a really straight path mm. from university through work. And that's okay. Um, if that suits you, that's great. But for many of us, like you and I, it's maybe been a bit more winding. And that might not have been the traditional way to do things in the past. But I think maybe more and more now it's far more accepted and it's certainly easier when you run your own business and you're not looking for a job and having to explain why <laughs> your CV is, you know, all over yeah. the place. But, um, but, it, yeah, but there's then more and more opportunities. But, no, but yeah. it's interesting when people apply, uh, you know, with great studies uh, that they know more than me mm. in theory and then I have to say yes, no, and then they have to work for me, then I'm an ex-musician. And with political, <laughs> political science degree, I feel a little guilty. But at the same time, I would say experience. Mm. Experience, experience. With going back, which I'm going to call this uh, conversation of ours about, what was it? Curiosity yeah. and generosity. Yes. Yeah. This, this is about love, you know? Yeah. Those love are for words. yourself and for the others. And I think that's what it is all about. I agree. At least a big part. Yeah? I agree. That's a nice way of wrapping it up. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, generosity. It's so important. And it always comes back. Always comes back. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Or at least it shows in what you're doing. Always. Look, always. Because I... Uh, I'm no one, but I'm f surrounded of amazing people. Is because I'm amazing, probably. But, <laughs> but but the truth is that it what goes around comes around. Yeah. Well, but the, yeah, you know, the singer. That's true. But I think that really is like this. Then you know, some people are luckier that they're really mean and they have this amazing love coming towards him or her. But the thing is. Do they realize? Do they know? And I don't give a shit about the others. Mm. Us now, I think we had a wonderful conversation on generosity and um, 
curiosity without killing any cat. <laughs> yeah? Indeed. Thanks, Stefano. <laughs> Thank you. Ciao. <laughs>